What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupCentrals.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video we're going to check out a new railing extension by the developer of Maj Wall and Maj Stair called Maj Rail. So I do want to say a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. They voted on this extension. Uh, they get to vote every week on which extension I'm going to cover on the channel. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week. Make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download this extension from the SketchUp extension warehouse directly inside of SketchUp. So you can go to the extension warehouse and just look up Maj Rail and it's going to show up right here and I will note that there's now a link in here where you can support the developer with what he's doing so if you like what he's doing please consider going to uh, this website right here and supporting him a little bit so he can keep creating great SketchUp extensions um, but what we're going to do is we're going to download this by clicking the install button then we're going to use it to create some rails and so first off let's take a look at it from a high level so you can turn it on by going to extensions and activating Maj Rail right here. And so you can see how there's a number of different settings in here that you can adjust. Um, note that uh, I believe all of these measurements are in centimeters, I think, um, for your heights. So you can adjust those by typing values in here. And there's three types, and then we'll talk about the offsets a little bit later. Um, but for now, let's take a look at the types. So. And so you can pick a rail type just by clicking the drop down and adding a type. So we're just going to click on the A button right here. We're going to click on OK. And so whenever you do this, you get this little menu showing you the different options that you have inside of SketchUp. So you can see how you single click to set your pole positions, you double click to set your rail, and then you can use a number and a couple keystrokes in order to adjust um, the number of poles that are in here. So let's start by creating a rail. So we're gonna click on OK. And so what this is gonna do is there's no real visual indicator that it's active, but it is, you can see in the lower right hand corner where it says that it's active. And so it even gives you an instruction which says to select your first rail pull. And so if you mouse over the end of this, this is going to kind of inference to points inside of SketchUp. It just doesn't give you a visual indicator that it's doing that. But now let's say we were to double click on this endpoint that's going to create our rail. So that's going to be your simplest way to create a rail. So now let's take a look at what it would look like if we wanted multiple pulls in here. So let's run the extension again. And this time when we do this, we're going to use the number plus X. So we're going to single click and then you're going to mouse over the point that you want this to um, set as your second point. But this time we're going to type in a number and the letter X. So make sure your mouse is in the proper position first and then type in 4X and hit the enter key. Well, notice how what that does is that creates four copies in here or four rails instead of just the instead of just the one. So that's how you're going to add different numbers of rails in here. And then when you're done, you can just double click in order to create this. Notice how this comes in here and that creates this railing. And so now let's try the E function. So if we do Maj Rail, we'll stay with these options for now. We're going to do a number plus E. So we're going to single click, then we're going to type in for E and hit the enter key. What that does is that just draws the rail. So it doesn't leave it live. It actually creates the rail um, without you having the option to click in here again. So if you do just want to create a rail like this, so if we were to type in like six and then E, that's just going to create the rail without you having to come in here and double click or anything like that. And so let's take a look at the different railing types. So that was a type A. Now let's take a look at type B. So type B, number plus E. So we're just going to do four E, hit the enter key. So that's going to be the type two rail. Then the last rail is going to be a type C. We're going to click on OK, and we'll do single point for E. And so this last rail creates more of a glass rail in here, right? So it's got the little retainers in here and then the glass pieces. So these are currently the three kinds of rails that you can create with this extension. So now let's take a look at what we would do if we were creating a rail that goes along a more complex path. So let's say for example, and I'm probably going to make a little bit bigger example, but let's say we had a rail that we wanted to kind of step a little bit. 
So something like this, so three edges. And let's say along each one of these, we wanted four posts, right? So what we would do is we would activate Mesh Rail. Let's go with Rail Type B for this one. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on OK. And OK, then we're gonna single click. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in a value of 4X and hit the Enter key. We're gonna mouse over this corner type in 4x and hit the enter key. And then over this corner, we're gonna do 4e and hit the enter key. And so what that does is that comes in here and that creates the rail um, with four additional posts on each one of these. So you can see how you can use this to easily create those longer runs of railings in here. We do the same thing over here. So let's say for example, that we wanted to, let's do the railing type A on this one. We click on okay. But this time, instead of using the number plus x, we're just gonna click. So I'm just gonna click in here, click again, 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 again. Then I'm gonna double click. Notice how what that does is that comes in here and that creates that railing um, based on the points that we set in here by clicking. And so now let's take a look at the options for the offsets. So right now, and I'm gonna hit the space key to get out of the tool, I'll delete this. Right now, let's take a look at what the offsets do. So remember, you have options in here for run offset and perpendicular offset. And so for our run offset, let's type a value of, we'll call it four and hit okay. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna click on the midpoint of this object over and over again. And so notice how when we do this, I'm getting an offset in here from where I click. So this offset is gonna offset it forward and back from where I'm clicking. So if you need each one of these to have a little bit of a forward offset, you can do that by using that first offset option, the run offset. Let's say we don't want this to offset forward and back. Let's say we want it to offset left or right. Well, what we can do is, let's go ahead and select a rail type B. I'm gonna set this to zero, but we can set our perpendicular offset. So I'm gonna type in a value of negative four and click on okay. So now let's add a rail to this one. So we're gonna click on this point right here. Notice how what I'm getting is I'm getting an offset in this direction from my points. So instead of getting the forward back offset, we're getting that left right offset. So now if I double click in here, you can see how this is placing this offset from the point that I was selecting. So that can be really helpful um, if you're gonna do what I did right here, which is base this on the midpoint of a stair riser, but you want it to be over a little bit. And that's gonna be especially important if we do something like a spiral stair, like this one, because we want that to be able to do that offset automatically for each one of these. And so let's say that we wanted to add a rail type C in here. And let's go ahead and leave our height as is. You can make it taller or shorter by typing in values here, but we're gonna leave our perpendicular offset at negative four. Well, now if we click on okay, and we come in here, and we click on the midpoint of each one of these, what that's gonna do is that's gonna place our rail in here. Now, if we double click, that's gonna generate this rail. And that glass rail takes a little while longer to generate. But you can see how what that does is that comes in here and that really quickly generates that rail. So you can use this to create railings along curved objects, just like this. And so let's say that we wanted to have a rail that was gonna go up. And then let's say we had something that was gonna run across, right? So let's say we had like a landing or something like that. So we could do the same thing, but now We'd wanna go into Maj Rail, set our offset on this one to be four instead of negative four, because we're on the other side of the rail. And we're just gonna click on these midpoints. And notice how if you do click in the wrong place, like over here and over here, you can tap the escape key to go back, which is a nice feature as well. But now what we've got, is we've got our railings, in here, but now we also wanna add these over here. And let's say we want maybe like six vertical posts. We would just type in a value of six E and hit the enter key. So what that's gonna do, is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna generate this whole rail, right? So it's gonna generate this part as well as this part with our six vertical posts right here. So you can see how you can use this to create some pretty complex railings. And granted this is, 
very narrow, but it should give you a pretty good idea of what we can do with this extension. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you or are you gonna try this extension? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, my patrons actually voted on this extension as the extension I was gonna cover this week. So if that is something you're interested in, you wanna support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week. Make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.